couple of minutes on uh, the near future of uh, commercial space. Uh, I've never put a satellite in space, never been to space, like to go to space. I get up every morning and uh, drag my airplane out and fly down to Mojave with the dream that what we're doing uh, with the number of companies now 19 uh, will actually make it possible for more of us to go to space. And as Chad knows, uh, for years we've been working together and collaborating on, on taking the best practices that we think we are developing and think we are, are uh, working on in Mojave because if we are successful, hopefully many of you will have a chance to be successful around the globe. Uh, Ten years ago, uh, I had a meeting, actually it was 2003, uh, with Peter Diamandis and, uh, and Greg Marinak uh, down in Los Angeles, and we were talking about the potential of one of the 26 competing teams showing up to win the X Prize. And it was possible that year that one of the 26 teams would actually show up to the finish line with a winning concept. And for those of you that read the blogs and the press, 11 days ago we celebrated the 10th anniversary in Mojave and held an event that, uh, that brought it, anybody who wanted to come together that was part of the X Prize 10 years ago. And we set certain goals in 2003 of what the venue might look like, how we would export that venue to a thirsty world that was interested in our industry and what some of the outcomes we, we thought were essential that were by and large overlooked by the current space industry. We understood the thirst and we understood that if you go back, and because I'm a historian, if you go back to the, the photographs that were captured at Kitty Hawk in, 2000, or in 1903, there's no picture of a child in those photos. And so we said if we're gonna run an event where we're gonna have another Kitty Hawk moment, but potentially, how could we bring kids into the equation? And let's start a bit of a renaissance on, on this new industry and do something that we can. So most of you don't know that the day of the X Prize winning flight, we bust 4,000 children from the inner city. And uh, I remember we found a person who was willing to fund that and said, if you can get them there, we will take care of them and keep them safe being a, beginning at three in the morning until you put them back on the bus and take them home. And, that's, and we did that. And, and from that, we began the process of now that we've proven we can actually take kids. Well, those kids are no longer in the fourth grade. You get where I'm going with this? Those kids are now in college. And those kids had an experience that I guarantee you they still remember. And so now at Mojave, for the last four years, we've brought in summer and, in, and uh, intercession interns. And, and where I see the near future of space is we've created a pipeline of kids that now come to Mojave, and maybe there's only 40 or 50 a summer that get threaded through 165 different companies, 19 of which are in the space industry. And now the National Test Pilot School at Mojave holds a course for two weeks to take nothing but kids who apply to come to a space, or a, not a space camp, but a flight test camp, where they actually fly hardware, and these are high school juniors. Uh, and so we're making inroads, and I, I am committed, and I, I am convinced that those little efforts to bring the next generation in are what has, and my metric of proof of this, when I took over Mojave, the average age of a worker in our industry in Mojave was 53. Today it's 35, the numbers have been reversed. And I am convinced that the work and the efforts, and if you all took on that challenge to make it absolutely real, that you must bring in interns in the summer, and it's okay to have an interview. Those become your best recruiters. You no longer have to recruit. Those kids go home and they bring their friends. And it solves the recruitment problem. So for the near future, uh, one of the biggest things I can report that I have seen a shift in our ability to recruit for our industry and the thirst that we thought was alive in 2003, it is, and it's healthy. And uh, uh, you know, I'm 60 year old, 61 year old guy about to turn 62. Uh, my kids are 30 years old, but to me it's enlightening that we, we actually had a plan that's working. And the other evidence of where near space is going, uh, in, I think it was 2004, there were four or five of us got together in, at Elon's shop 
and we decided to hold a meeting to start an organization, which we really struggled over the name, and I think it was the, somehow we boiled it up to the Personal Space Flight Federation, that has morphed into the Commercial Space Flight Federation. And one of the things we, we said is we need an organization that will take on the challenge of policing our own industry, coming up with standards that we write that will, will become standards of how we're going to operate as an industry. And, you know, after 10 years, uh, Eric, correct me, that didn't we just pass our first and working on our second? Or did we pass two officially? I think we're on the second. Or on the second. Well, you know what? It's always that first one's a tough one. But we did it. And, George, uh, that's an area that I know you're focused on in your organization, and uh, uh, we're, we're actually rather proud of that. You had a first success. And it may not sound like much, but it's how we do tests, how we conduct tests, and the protocols we use on how we're going to test. And the first thing you had to do is what to test. Define it. Well, I'm a cowboy, remember? I used to hunt around look for the cows. That, and uh, to me, it had to be real simple. A test is you don't know the outcome. Seems simple enough? So if you don't know the outcome, we're going to structure a test where only certain people can be present. Because if they go wrong, I don't want to take out a bunch of looky-loos. We've done that once in Mojave. And so it was important that the industry police itself with simple things that will make a profound and long-term difference in the industry. So those certain things that were started a number of years ago are starting uh, to show benefits to the industry. And again, the fact that we are attracting so many members of this industry into the CSF and they have a voice. Uh, we have a very active board. I had the pleasure of chairing that board for two years. Uh, we've hired Eric, and Eric, I think you need to be recognized. I don't think you're speaking at this event, but I am extremely pleased that you want the job, and you've got it, and you're a great leader. And so if you don't know Eric Stalmer, Eric, introduce yourself to the crowd, and he's uh, the new uh, president of the CSF. Um, so these may not be what you want to hear as the near space, but these are big deals. And the fact that Eric uh, wanted to be the leader uh, going forward is huge. So most things that we talk about involve people, they involve process, and they involve the correct application of technology. Uh, I think it, by each yardstick, whether you're talking about the people, we've seen a huge influx in a driving down of the average age of the workforce in our industry. That's a big deal. On the process side, we're starting to see uh, real commercial ventures enter the game. Uh, uh, you know, the, the fact that Elon is a 10-year-old company, is SpaceX, 10-year-old company, and won a contract and has been delivering cargo to the International Space Station uh, reliably is fairly significant for a company that just a few years ago had less than 3,000 people. Uh, scale composites. Uh, when I took over Mojave, had 30-some employees, 30-some employees. And two years later, they put two of their employees in space with 30 people that were building a spaceship and two airplanes to do that. Uh, now they're building Strata Launch uh, for Paul Allen, uh, which is the biggest airplane ever built. Uh, a lot of people, when they come to Mojave, say, you know, you have a telescope to the future from Mojave. And in, in some regard, we do. But uh, what I see in near future I see rangeless operations of satellites to space, not only the Ariane, the, the SpaceX, the Sea Launch, the, uh, the Deltas and the like, but there's going to be new, new market entry into this and it's be air launch uh, to orbit, uh, fairly uh, substantial payloads being able to be delivered from aircraft uh, uh, in a somewhat of a rangeless uh, arena, take off from an airport airplane lands back at an airport or a spaceport uh, and can maybe go thousands of miles in order to con conduct the launch for a, a polar, elliptical, or even a solar uh, launch. So those are new changes. And, new, and uh, I think it's, it's incumbent on us to endorse the change in an industry. And I, uh, yesterday I was talking to the local business leaders, and they were talking about the change locally and, and uh, what some of it means. And I will, I will say, you know who opposed the auto industry? It was the buggy whip makers. Uh, who opposed the vacuum industry was the broom makers. And it's, it's, it's logical for people who have been in the industry for a long time uh, to oppose new market uh, entry 
that's natural. But I think it's also natural to embrace that. The last comment is that uh, 10 years ago, it was difficult to see how this new commercial uh, interest could have an effect to where uh, your, your reach actually exceeded your grasp. And the fact that the commercial uh, entries that started 10 years ago are now actually holding major contracts with the National Space Agency and providing services to, to others around the globe truly proves that we are in a global market. Uh, I think uh, you're gonna see some policy changes over the next few years on ITAR and uh, actually make it more attractive for uh, domestic and international partners to work more closely together. I know the CSF has taken that on and other organizations as well. Uh, I think that's a real positive step forward. Uh, on the front end, uh, it, interesting, I was reviewing some of my video from this platform years ago and uh, I was asked when, uh, when uh, Virgin would be flying and that's always difficult for me to predict and talk about tenants, but I did make a comment then. It, my date was 2015, uh, Dick Rattan's was 2018. It's interesting, I think that interview, uh, I don't know where it was, but I, I had the video. Uh, it was interesting, those, those numbers came out and I believe the date was 2006. Uh, I'm still holding to my number. I think it's next year. And, I, uh, and uh, Chad, I think it's time to get ready and, and uh, to the local community, I, I really am proud of what you've done at Spaceport. America. I was out there Monday and uh, uh, Chris and, Ch and Chad and Aaron set it up for me to go out and have a tour by personal tour by one of the guards and to see the changes and, and, the, and the absolute beauty uh, of brand new facilities and, I, and I, I was saying man I started with an old marine base that had fallen apart and then sat fallow for a number of years and look what you have and it, it to me it's an international asset uh, and I, I really wish you well but uh, I think this is your year. And uh, thank you very much for having me to, uh, I appreciate it.